Perfect. All right. Well, my name is Ellie Morgan, and I am a senior dietetics student at UND right now. And I'm doing my internship actually through Ultra and Choice. So I've been learning a lot about different things, and so I'm excited to share this presentation with you guys. So it's going to be on meatless meals. And so just kind of talking about how we can include those into our diet every once in a while and the health benefits that come with doing this. So I want to first ask you guys, do you have meatless meals ever? Do you typically do, um, I know you guys said you're omnivores. <laughs> <laughs> so like what are you guys currently kind of making for dinner? Most of the time we have meat, my husband likes yeah. meat, so okay. most of the time, and it's usually pork. Pork? Sounds good. We each had a pork chop this morning for breakfast. <laughs> okay, okay. Left over from last night. That's all good. Perfect. Well, that's totally fine. You guys can for sure keep including meat in your diet, but I just think it's always fun to have some new ideas and just... Um, share some of the health benefits if you guys are wanting to make some of these changes. So I have the presentation in front of you too. So this first slide here. Um, okay, so we're just gonna talk about incorporating a plant-based protein in place of meat in some of our meals. And then I did give you guys some new recipes that we're gonna kind of look through and see if any of those look good to you guys. And one thing I want to say is we can just start small. It's not like we need to have <coughs> meals every single day or anything like that. But maybe we want to just try like once a week, trying one of these recipes. It's just important to make small, realistic goals. Um, you don't need to make any crazy changes or anything like that. All right. So what are plant-based proteins? I have a little list here. So... Legumes, have you guys ever heard of those? Kind of? Yeah, we, we are aware of them, but the scary part for us is that they don't get enough protein, especially in our ages. Yeah, for sure. So we have to rely a lot on meat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a very valid point, and we'll talk about that a little bit too as we move further into the presentation. But legumes are chickpeas, black beans, lentils. So I don't know if you've ever heard of those, but legumes is kind of an interesting word, but those are kind of what fall underneath of that. And other plant-based proteins are tofu, peas. This is a little bit surprising to people, but fruits and veggies actually do have some protein in them as well. And whole grains, and then nuts and seeds do too. So as I'm kind of reading through those, those are things that we can really easily add into our meals. Even if we had meat in our meal as well, just adding some of those, it's always good to get a little bit of that plant-based protein. So incorporating more of those fruits and veggies is also going to help to give us more antioxidants and vitamins too. And those nuts and seeds, which have that little bit of plant-based protein, are also going to be giving us omega-3s which actually help prevent heart disease too. So those are just some of the few benefits right there. All right, so if we wanna to turn to this page, you guys. So this is kind of what you're talking about, how you think maybe if I'm only doing plant-based proteins that I won't be getting enough protein. So that's something I wanna kind of touch on. So talking about complete versus incomplete protein. So our body needs 20 different amino acids that bond together to actually form a protein. And I'm not going to get all scientific on you guys because that'll just be confusing. But so complete proteins, and this is found in more of the animal-based products such as fish, poultry, eggs, beef, pork, even some dairy products, along with whole sources of soy such as tofu and edamame. Those are our complete proteins. So they have the nine essential amino acids that our body can't produce on its own. 
But on the other, so that's what we need to be getting from food because our body can't actually produce them. But on the other hand, incomplete proteins contain some, but not all of those nine essential amino acids. And those are in more of our plant-based sources that I have been mentioning, such as those legumes, such as beans, peas, and lentils, those nuts, seeds, whole grains, and vegetables. So when you're hearing that, that maybe sounds a little bit scary because you aren't getting all the essential amino acids. But the really good thing is that if we're including a variety of these plant-based sources, they kind of add together to give us those nine essential amino acids that we need. And I know, um, you know, when we think plant-based, we think, oh, it really doesn't have that much protein, right? But I have a little comparison for you guys. So chickpeas, have you ever tried those before? Yeah. So one cup of chickpeas has 16 grams of protein in it. And if we compare that to like three ounces of chicken breast, which is like a typical serving, that has 25 grams. So a little bit less, but does that kind of surprise you how much is actually in it? No? <laughs> yeah? So yeah, we're actually able to get quite a bit from that. So just incorporating those in will help us get to our protein goals for the day. All right, you guys. So why should we try plant-based protein? First of all, they're full of nutrients. As I was saying, with fruits and veggies, they have so many vitamins and antioxidants that are really good for our health. But the other really great thing it is, is that they are very high in fiber. So according to the USDA, Americans really do struggle to reach their fiber recommendations. None of us ever do, I don't think. Yeah, I know. It's really, really tough for people. So that's why if we are including these plant-based proteins, it can definitely help with that. So I was reading this, this is kind of crazy, but Americans typically only get 10 to 15 grams of fiber on average. And for women, the recommended is 25 grams. And for men, it's 38 grams. So yeah, definitely um, not quite meeting that. But in just half a cup of cooked black beans, for example, that has eight grams of fiber right there. So yeah, that is really helpful if we are incorporating more of these. All right, so now some more of the benefits that come with plant-based proteins. So first of all, getting enough fiber is really good for our digestive health. So it helps us with like bowel movements and it also helps to control um, our blood sugar levels and it also helps to feel fuller for longer. So incorporating more of these plant-based proteins is linked with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. It's associated with decreased risk of certain cancers, and it can also help with weight management as well. So those all sound like pretty good things, right guys? Yeah, so one of the reasons that it helps with weight management is because a lot of times we're getting more bang for our buck, I like to say, because if we have like fruits and veggies and whole grains, we're oftentimes able to have more volume of food for fewer calories. And we're getting that fiber with it as well, which helps us to stay fuller for longer and helps um, with more of that satiety. Are you guys having any questions as I'm talking right now? So far so good. So far so good, perfect. Okay, so now I've kind of gone over the information part, but I do have some of these recipes if we wanna kind of look over them together. So the first one is this vegan sweet potato chickpea bowl. And I don't know if you guys can kind of see the picture on your um, piece of paper, but it's that top picture. Yeah, perfect. So on that top slide, the very first picture, so that's showing us the Buddha bowl, it's called. And so just looking at the title, what would be the plant-based protein source in this one? Yes, perfect. Are we all on this one? 
Perfect. So chickpea would be our plant-based protein source in that. So as we're kind of looking through this list of ingredients, I want you guys to know that you can really pick and choose whatever you like. They say quinoa for the like um, grain source, but if you wanted to do rice, you could. That's always um, a little easier sometimes, but quinoa would be really good with this as well. So the main things in this one are sweet potatoes, which um, we're getting a little bit of protein in that actually too, and the chickpeas, and then really whatever veggie that we want, and then we put it on top of the rice. So do you guys know how to make chickpeas? Okay. Really? That's awesome. How about you? Have you ever made them before? Okay. So they're not too, too tough. You guys can share your tips as well, but there's kind of two main ways that I found that you can make them. So you can either do them in the oven or on a stove top, like skillet. How do you guys usually make them? We cook them in water. In water? Yeah. Okay. Not much water, but some. Okay. I mean, actually, I use the instant pot. To make oh. To make it in that yeah, see, I've never tried it in the instant pot, but it's I've heard, nice. yeah, I've heard that works really yeah, well. It's, yeah. That's all it takes. For sure. Um, but so, like, for you, are you, um, do you usually like use your oven or do you like to cook on the stove top more? Or do you have an instant pot? No, I don't have an instant pot. Me either. <laughs> but some oven. oven. Okay, so perfect. Something easy you can do is you just take the chickpeas, they come in like a can, and then you just kind of put them. This is how I do it. I put it in a strainer and kind of rinse them out a little bit and then dry them off. And then you can just kind of drizzle them with some olive oil and whatever seasonings you like, like garlic or paprika really whatever you like and then you just put them in the oven usually it takes around 20 25 minutes or so 30 minutes and just kind of whenever they get crispy they're all done we do ours from scratch oh you do oh awesome yeah either way different names for them so you make your own hummus I need cooking lessons from you guys. I'm not even kidding. Wow, that is so cool. But it's very, very inexpensive to make your own. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome, you guys. You guys are like little chef masters over there. I love it. So, yeah, so this one, they have the whole list of instructions there too, but that one just has mostly sweet potatoes, rice, chickpeas, and whatever veggies you want. And you can really just make it however, whatever fits your preferences. Okay, so the next one I have here is the vegetarian chili. So that's um, the second picture down. And this one, you make it just kind of like regular chili, but in place of beef, you would, this recipe calls for, I wanna say pinto and black beans. Yes, pinto and black beans, but again, whatever you like. I feel like chickpeas could even work in there too. But so yeah, you use that in place of it. And you can really use um, a crock pot if you want or really any pot and just put your ingredients in there and just kind of let it simmer away. So do you guys want to go through this one more in depth or do we feel okay with it? I think I'm okay with it. Okay. Yep. So if you've made regular chili, it's pretty similar to that, but just in place of the beef, we would be doing trying beans instead. All right. So then on the next slide, we have tacos. And this one, so this recipe with the refried bean tacos. So in place of like a chicken or a beef taco, we would try black beans or refried beans. So whatever preference you like. I personally really like refried beans in them. It kind of gives it a different flavor. But this one is super fast. It only takes about 15 minutes to make. Again, just kind of like regular tacos, but you can either get um, like a can of refried beans 
or you could even just take regular beans and kind of mash them up too for a different consistency and then use that as the filling of the taco and then really whatever veggies you like on top of there. Yeah, and then this next one, this might be pushing it for you guys, I don't know. Tofu, have you ever tried it? You have, wow. <laughs> have you ever tried tofu? Okay, do you like it? Exactly. Yeah, that's how I feel too. I honestly make tofu like every single week. It's one of my favorite things to make. You've never made it? Okay. Well, I'll kind of, I don't know if I'm an expert or anything, but I'll kind of walk you through how I usually do it. So you can just buy tofu like in the blocks mm -hmm. that they have at the store. Like Walmart has them and they have different kinds. So they have either like firm or extra firm. And I always go for the extra firm because I feel like it is easier to make it a little bit more crispy. The firm one has a little bit more water, so it's hard to get it really nice and dry. But it comes in a block, and then all you have to do is take it out, and then I just take some paper towels and kind of pat it dry, and then you just cut it into little cubes. And then I always just put mine like on the stove top with some like olive oil, and then you just kind of let it sit. It usually takes around 10 minutes, and then it gets really crispy. And then, yeah, you can add whatever seasonings, as they were saying, how it really takes on the flavor of anything that you're making. Um, I like to just add kind of whatever seasonings, then you can add it to anything. So for this one, they are doing like a stir fry. So they do like rice or noodles, whatever you're feeling, and then the tofu, and then whatever veggies you like. So you just kind of do it on the stove top, and it's pretty easy. We've got a big block. I used it really? First, I used mm -hmm. water instead of a lot of oil. Yeah, well, that's great too, and for then sure. I used um, cut up bell peppers. Okay, yeah. And onions. Mm -hmm. and all, all together. That was good. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What? You could yeah. try it. You could try it for sure. I think you could honestly just cook it in a wok just the same. So that would be fun to try. Yeah, I think with peppers it'd be good because then it kind of like absorbs that flavor too. All right, and then the very last recipe you guys is called one pot black bean fajita pasta. So again, black beans would be our plant-based protein source there. So again, whatever noodles you like, and then kind of whatever seasonings and veggies you like too. Again, it's a really quick recipe, just like normal pasta, and then just kind of heating up the beans and mixing them in with everything else. So, yeah. I bought 10 pounds of black beans, organic black beans. Did you really? Walmart. Did you do them in like a, in a bag or in the can? In the bag? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, I always just, I was just saying the cans, but the dried beans are really good too. They just take a little bit longer to make. Yeah, but, 30 minutes in the Instant Pot. Yeah, it sounds like Instant Pot right, changes well. lives, huh? Yeah, well. <laughs> For sure. Okay, you guys, well, um, do you have any questions for me right away as we were kind of going through this, either on like any of the benefits or content or any of the recipes? Ellie and I can answer any too if you okay. if they have Sounds any. Okay. Okay. Any questions off the top of your head? Or are you feeling pretty good about it? Pretty good so far. <laughs> awesome. Well, after we are going through these recipes, is there any that you feel like you want to try? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I want you guys to try the tofu in, in the wok. I think that would be really fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Is there any that you really liked as you were going through this? Yeah. I think that's helpful in the yeah. Wok Pretty cool. Yeah. For sure. Well, thank you guys for coming so much. Um, yeah. Is there anything else for me? I, I bought a couple of. 
silicone mm -hmm. spatulas for okay. the lock. They've got a curved edge and you just oh. Ooh. And that works really well. I think got them on Amazon. Wow. That's super cool. Well, I feel like I've learned a lot from you guys too, just like you've learned from me. So it's it's perfect. Yeah. And you guys are free to take those handouts with you too. So, all right. Jen, anything from you? Okay. No, just thanks for coming. And if you want the recording or have any questions, just let us know. Let us know. Yeah, for sure. All right.